So hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 5 of RF1 Manager Save. Now if you didn't watch the last episode, go back and watch that one. It was a sprint weekend in Baku and the Ferraris absolutely dominated. Carlos Sainz won the race from Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez down in P3. It was 9th and 10th for our two cars, about where we are in terms of the performance index at the moment. But Pierre Gasly getting the vital points which puts him in terms of the driver's standings in front of Esteban Ocon. He's now got 6-5 to five in terms of points, so that little inter-team fight, Pierre Gasly is leading. In the driver's standings, Max Verstappen is leading the way, but Carlos Sainz, don't write the Ferraris off, are coming up the rear quite quickly. Carlos Sainz now only 21 points behind Max Verstappen. Checo Perez in P3 and Charles Leclerc down in P4. Constructor standings wise, Red Bull are leading the way on 161 points, but then again, Ferrari once again, only a few points behind. So Ferrari well in the fight in both championships at this moment in time. To bring you up today on the car park developments, front wing is something we're really looking to improve. So that's being developed. We're looking at 29 days for that. Suspension, we've got some new suspension coming through in a couple of days' time. Won't be on in time for this weekend's Grand Prix, which is the Miami Grand Prix this weekend. Looking forward to this one. 57 laps round here. Max Verstappen holds the lap record. I had a very good record on F1 Manager 22 on this circuit. It was probably my most successful circuit. The expected strategy is a one-stop or a two-stop, depending on what the tyre wear is like. So I'm going to get through practice, and I'll see you in qualifying for the Miami Grand Prix. We're going to Miami. Our weekend continues with qualifying as the drivers fight it out for a strong grid position. The Miami International Autodrome has some lovely long straights, but a driver still needs to have total trust in their car setup to get a fast qualifying lap. Turns 14 and 15 in particular are the ones that catch the drivers out in qualifying. Yao Leclerc has been a talking point for many of late. Karun, how do you think he's doing so far? They had an excellent performance in practice, setting a solid lap time. They must be feeling confident. But confidence doesn't necessarily mean success in Formula 1. Stay with us as we see who can deliver on motorsport's biggest stage. So here we go then, final laps in Q3. Charles Leclerc has been looking strong as Karun was saying in the intro, but we are looking in the fight with the Mercedes this weekend as Esteban Ocon is green through the first and second sectors. Let's have a look where Esteban Ocon manages to qualify on a set of fresh soft compound tyres. Doesn't manage to improve on P8. Gasly has not had the best lap, must be said. He's down in P9, but I do think we are in the fight with the Mercedes this weekend. Uh, could be a very good weekend for us if we just fast forward. And it looks like the Ferraris once again at P1 and P2 for Leclerc and Sainz. Verstappen in P3, Perez P4, and then comes Hamilton, Alonso, Russell... The two Alpines of Ocon and Gasly, and then Stroll in P10. Interestingly, Pierre Gasly, quicker than Ocon in the first and second qualifiers, but in the third, Ocon just pipped him. Let's get to the strategy screen. Right, guys, we are going to split the strategy for this race. So Esteban Ocon is going to be on the two-stop. Now, if I'd have saved two sets of fresh soft compound tyres, I'd have been a little bit more comfortable with this. But apparently this is the quicker strategy, but I've just got a funny feeling that we may get a little bit lucky with the one stop. But Esteban Ocon's going to go on strategy B. Uh, he's going to be on the softs, then onto the mediums, then back onto the softs towards the end of the race. So we're pretty okay with that. Uh, S uh, Pierre Gasly, sorry. He's going to start on the mediums, then go on to the hards towards the end. There is a good chance of safety cars around here we've seen on previous games. So that can happen. And I don't know why, but something's just telling me to go for the one stop with Pierre Gasly. Let's see if it pays off. Eight and ninth. Let's get to five red lights. 57 laps await our competitors here in Miami. So may the best driver win. Yuki Tsunoda will be hoping things go his way today. Not a huge surprise to see them on the back row, but they've certainly got the potential to move up from here. And it'll be exciting to see just what will happen here today. Here we go with the Miami Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. 
And away we go, and straight away we are looking at this battle at the front. Carlos Sainz, Verstappen got an amazing start uh, from P3, and he split the two Ferraris after turn one. He's up into P2. Meanwhile, Ocon and Gasly fighting with each other at this moment in time, but Esteban Ocon is going to lead us away at the moment. We are going to tell Pierre Gasly just to hold on at the moment. We don't need to be attacking um, his teammate, he's on a different strategy, don't attack, he's just got to try and latch onto the back of this train in front and use the ERS when he can, but he's straight away under attack from Lance Stroll and we are going to be telling him, do not, def uh, sorry, always defend, we do not want to be losing position to Lance Stroll early in this race, so we are defending at this moment in time, but on lap one, as we lead away, Carlos signs. But it looks like, while we're looking at that, Lance Stroll has managed to get up into P9 and pass Pierre Gasly. He doesn't seem to have the pace early in Grand Prix, Pierre Gasly. It's just been something we've noticed um, from the start of this little career mode we're having. And Esteban Ocon already dropping out of DRS of the cars in front of Russell and Hamilton. I thought we were going to be very much in the fight with these guys early doors we are going to tell both cars to deploy early and push on the fuel uh, to try and stay with the mercedes cars in front but as we come to the end of lap one it is carlos signs who leads from max verstappen leclerc dropping a little bit further back in p3 then comes perez alonso hamilton and russell ocon doing everything he can to catch back up with these two guys then comes stroll gasly and Nico Hulkenberg. We know we do like a fight with the Haas this season. And for whatever reason, we don't seem to have the pace of the Aston Martins at the start of this Grand Prix. Lance Stroll on that medium compound attire, DRS wide open, past Esteban Ocon up in to P8. So as usual, it's P9 and 10 for our guys at this moment in time. What Gasly's got to do now is ensure that he keeps up with his teammate and if he can, keep Kevin Magnussen out of the DRS range of uh, of him because if we can do that we can pull away from the Haas cars that would be absolutely ideal for us on lap four Verstappen has dropped out of DRS range of Carlos Sainz believe it or not and now he's under threat from Charles Leclerc then comes Perez and Alonso but we're keeping an eye on this gap and has the Haas got DRS it has that is not ideal at all for Pierre Gasly and on lap six, Esteban Ocon thinks, do you know what? We're going to have a bit of a battle with Lance Stroll. And he manages to get past him. He's back up in to PA on those soft compound tyres. It's a lovely move, to be fair, from Esteban Ocon. Pierre Gasly doing his utmost to stay with these cars at this moment in time. But it is proving difficult. But he should be coming into the... Uh, he should be getting a little bit quicker now. 88% tyres for Pierre Gasly. He is the tyre whisperer out of our two drivers. Magnussen on 76% softs is getting the DRS and that's what's really keeping him within such a distance at this moment in time. Uh, Leclerc also has overtaken Max Verstappen who's in a right ding dong battle with his teammate. Both Red Bulls have the DRS, they've split strategies the same as we have, one on the medium and one on the hard and Checo Perez on the soft compound tyre is up in to P3. Carlos Sainz enjoying his day in Miami, 2.3 seconds, gap to Leclerc. Lap 10, Esteban Ocon, possible first mistake really of the season. Uh, Esteban Ocon decided to run a little bit wide, I think if we're going to get the camera angle of it, he did. He ran wide, rejoined and Lance Stroll is now up in to P8. Uh, Esteban Ocon 1.2 seconds gap to Stroll now Gasly is still keeping Magnussen out of DRS range which is the most important thing um, and he has been topping up his ERS a little bit as well but he is managing the tyres exceptionally well is Pierre Gasly on 80% tyres if anyone can make this one stop work it could be Pierre Gasly and what may also play into our hand we are going a little bit longer if there is a safety car at the right time, Pierre Gasly will benefit massively. Meanwhile, at the front, we see Perez and Sainz battling for the lead. And Charles Leclerc is looking interested. Fernando Alonso is looking interested. He's only two seconds back from the leader. 1.4 seconds back from Leclerc. But it's a right ding-dong battle. And this possibly could be the reason why Sainz's as tyres are going off now big time. And as this battle ensues, Verstappen and Alonso are catching up. Um, and Russell only four seconds back. If this carries on, he may be back in the fight as well. Uh, Hamilton's in P7. We're still 9th and 10th in the gap now as we have a look. 2.4 seconds now. Gap from Stroll to Ocon and 2.1 seconds from Gasly. 
Unfortunately, guys, it does look like this season, especially the early parts, we are the fifth best team on the grid and we are showing it very consistently. There's something to be said for consistency. Lap 11. We've just entered the pit window, but Carlos signs, interestingly, very early pit stop on lap 14. Will we see a few of us react to this? The Ferrari looking like it was struggling with tyre wear into P10. He's going to come out 3.4 seconds behind Gasly and Ocon. He may even tow Pierre along a little bit as well if we can get DRS at the right time. But Carlos signs, first of the leaders to pit. And on lap 16, Carlos signs is having to make his way through some traffic. And that traffic is the two of his R2 Alpine, sorry. He manages to get past Pierre Gasly. He makes a little bit of a dive there down the inside, it must be said. Possibly a little bit of frustration there from Pierre Gasly. Carlos Sainz has just set the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. And now we are going to ride on board with Pierre Gasly on the famous visor cam. Because Sainz and Gasly are going to have DRS on Esteban Ocon on this next straight. Will either of them manage to get past Ocon? Carlos Sainz looking to the inside doesn't manage to get the move done. We're still riding on board with Pierre Gasly. Let's have a little look. Will Carlos Sainz get him here over the start finish straight? Gap to Magnussen, incidentally. 5.2 seconds now is the gap between these two. We do get a lovely optimal pit stop lap notification in the middle of his highlight. But Carlos Sainz not managing to get past Esteban Ocon quite as easily as he got past uh, Pierre Gasly. Lap 17. Lap 18, and once again, we are on board with Pierre Gasly. Esteban Ocon is pitting this lap, and Carlos Sainz is doing absolutely everything to cut, get in front of him. But what he has managed to do is block him off, and now Esteban Ocon, as he goes into the pits, that's fair enough. He will leave Pierre Gasly to try and latch onto the back of this Ferrari and uh, Pierre Gasly will get the DRS as well and hopefully keep with him. That's the plan for Pierre Gasly. But meanwhile, this is always a bit of trepidation nowadays as we see Pierre Gasly into the box. Pit stop training has been working and it certainly has. 2.6 seconds, no mistakes on this pit stop. We stay out in front of Magnussen. And in fact, we're miles in front of Magnussen and Hulkenberg. The Haas team, interestingly, Double stacking, but doing very, very well to get them both in and out. Great work from the Haas team. Decent stop for them as well. Gasly is now up into P8, but to be fair, the Ferrari of Sainz has absolutely burned him straight away. But he is going to get Fernando Alonso coming up on the back of him very, very shortly. But at the moment, we are pretty happy with how Pierre is managing this race and managing these tyres. We are just going to go a little bit lighter on the tyres as well. Um, just to just to ensure that we can make this stint last as long as we can and the hards will be nice and fresh towards the end. Meanwhile, SD Bestie now, the tyres are a little bit cold. He's got to get them up to temperature, which I'm sure we will. And then Esteban will be trying to catch back up to where he was before the pit stops. Meanwhile, Sergio Perez coming in, leaving Max Verstappen out on circuit. Leclerc in the lead of the Grand Prix at the moment, lap 19. Lap 20, Fernando Alonso, the next one past Pierre Gasly. But this is not the worst thing in the world because it's just about if Pierre can then latch onto the back and get the DRS on these cars. To be fair, it's a lovely move from Fernando around the outside, coming on to the final straight. Now, let's have a look. Did we manage to stick with Pierre to, with Fernando Alonso? We certainly did. Carlos Sainz, by the way, is in a league of his own in this race. He's lapping fastest lap after fastest lap. Albon's just into the pit lane. But now, Pierre Gasly has just got to latch onto the back of Fernando Alonso and keep with him. That's all he's got to do. If he can do that, we're absolutely laughing. It's... It just makes sense. We've got to keep trying to just keep the pace with Pierre Gasly. Extend this stint as long as we can. But look, it's already eight, point, uh, eight tenths of a second. Down the straights, we are pretty quick. We seem to be matching Fernando Alonso down at this straight because we've obviously got that DRS. We've just got to stick with the DRS of Fernando Alonso. Meanwhile, Esteban Ocon, 2.1 seconds back from Logan Sargent. I believe Hamilton has pit. Um, let's just double check that. He has. Uh, Lewis Hamilton has pit. He's in P9. Sargent yet to pit. And then Ocon will be back up in to the points paying positions. But Pierre Gasly, unfortunately, straight away does drop out of, uh, of the DRS off Fernando Alonso. Meanwhile, Leclerc is coming into the pit lane as well. So on lap 20, Practically all the front runners have pit, barring uh, Verstappen and Russell. Let's have a little look. Decent pit stop for Ferrari, lap 21. You join us back. We have got a safety car on circuit, and unfortunately, it is for Pierre Gasly. Let's have a little look at this. 
it looks like it's the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton that's got damage and then Gasly loses it. Now, we're going to make a bold, bold strategy call. Pierre Gasly has retired, as has the Mercedes. Verstappen's into the pits. I'm assuming Max Verstappen is going to be fitting the hard compounder tyre he is. Now, are any of the other cars coming in? They're not. Esteban Ocon, despite already pitting, is coming into the pits. And he's going to be fitting a set of the hard compound tyres. In fact, Sainz and Alonso also coming into the pits. Maybe a few other cars are thinking the same. Let's have a little look at what Carlos Sainz is doing. He's fitting the hard compounds, as is Alonso. Esteban Ocon is going to be coming in and doing the same. Russell's already on hards, as is Stroll. Esteban Ocon, it made oh, sense. Yeah. We don't need another pit stop in this race. I was hoping a few of the other cars might not do it, but we decided to call Esteban in. Um, Alonso's had a pit stop issue by the looks of things as well. We're, we're not going to watch that as we've got a, a zone pit stop to worry about. As we go onto the hard compounded tyre, um, we see Magnussen go in front. Magnussen looks like he's stayed out, so Magnussen's going to have another pit stop to make. Albon's just coming around the final corner. Let's see if we get out in front of these two cars. I believe we will. Uh, Esteban Ocon certainly does. He's out into P9, but now hasn't got to stop again. Out of the top, guys. Magnussen and Perez and Leclerc have all got to stop again. Lap 9. Uh, sorry, not lap 9. Um, we'll come back when we're back to green flag running. Safety car is in this lap. Leclerc will lead us away on the soft compound attire. Will he just bolt now and try and put as much distance between himself and the Red Bulls as he possibly can? We are in P9. We could do with getting past Kevin Magnussen, although we've had a terrible restart, it must be said, from Esteban Ocon. Already losing nearly a second on Kevin Magnussen. Straight away, we're going to be telling him to deploy and catch back up with that Haas. Um, okay. But now it's all about how can we manage the tyres. There's cars in front of us, Russell and uh, Stroll in particular, who've been on those hard compound tyres for a couple more laps. Remember, Magnus and Perez and Leclerc have all got to pit again. But really, we could do a getting back in the DRS range. Lap 26, Leclerc leaves. Looks like we've got another crash on circuit. Let's have a little look at what happened here. It's Oscar Piastri, who's been in the wars a little bit in this series already. Um, locks up and sends the Williams wide. I believe that's the Williams of uh, Logan Sargent. And he comes back on just in front of his teammate. was Oscar Piastri Sargent now towards the back. Ocon uh, is managing to stick with Alexander Albon in the soft compound tyres. Magnussen on the hards. Remember, these two have got to stop again. So he's probably going to jump these two quite comfortably um, when these guys stop again. So Esteban now, it's just about saving the tyres. We're pushing on the fuel just to uh, just to get rid of a little bit of the fuel to be fair we're going to go on light tire saving mode and then hopefully hopefully we can pick up a couple of positions and get a couple of points here so esteban ocon all points hopes rest on him at this moment in time meanwhile leclerc has bolted for the hills as we expect but has only put 2.3 seconds we've got another yellow flag on circuit by the looks of things and we have got a virtual safety car now virtual safety car let's have a little look at what happens here Another crash. I told you, always it's always a challenge in Miami, and it might be the cars in front of us here. We can see Ocon in front, and there we go. Bang, we'll have those two positions. Not a problem. Not a problem. That's going to take two cars out of the race, and Esteban Ocon is up in 2P8. Uh, we're not too upset about that crash, it must be said. DRS is disabled, and we have got a VSC. Lap 30, uh, virtual safety car has ended. We're pushing once again on the fuel. We've got now the gap to Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg's got to come in. P8 is looking absolutely secure at this moment in time. As we see Alonso and Stroll in front of us, will we manage to catch up to those two? Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Who knows? Uh, Leclerc, gap 1.8 seconds. Ferrari have not got it right with Leclerc this afternoon. Carlos Sainz still very much in the fight for this win, but it's going to be a good day for Red Bull in the constructors at this moment in time. Who knows where we could end up? And with the incidents that's happened, there may be some more just yet. But at the moment, it's Leclerc from Verstappen. Perez and Sainz are the top four. Uh, Russell's in P5. Then come the two Aston Martins. We're in P8. Uh, Hulkenberg P9 on that soft compound tyre. But his tyres are dying off pretty quickly. Then comes Sonoda in P10. 16 runners only left in this race. 
Red flag, red flag. Lap 32, we said there might be another incident and it's going to be Nick DeVries by the looks of things. He spun it, bounced back onto the circuit. They can't get that away, um, even though there's a service rod to the left-hand side. So Nick DeVries is out and we have now got a red flag. Everyone will restart from the pit lane. And we're going to have a look at what strategy we go for. So here we go then. We're going racing once again. We have stuck on the hard compounded tyre. Because tyre options wise, we didn't have too much left. We didn't have a fresh set of mediums. We didn't have a fresh set of softs. So we've stuck on the hard compounded tyre. Hoping that we're going to come strong towards the end of this race. But that may have been a mistake. Looking at what's going on around us. So lap 34... This is going to require one hell of a drive from Esteban Ocon. Maybe we got this wrong, okay. but we didn't have the tyres. We would have had to have switched onto a set of medium tyres that we used. And I felt that we'd be better on the hards, especially as Esteban can be quite hard on his tyres. So P8, but everyone now is well back in the fight for the points today. But we've got three tenths of a second to Alonso. We've got to do everything we possibly can to stay with the cars in front, lap 34. And on lap 37, we're already regretting this as Nico Hulkenberg on the medium compound of tyres manages to get past Esteban before, well, he actually gets past him before the start finish line and gets DRS as well. So not a good start to proceedings from Esteban Ocon. Uh, he's struggling at the moment to keep pace with these guys, but hopefully, hopefully, this will come back to him towards the end. That's what I'm hoping, and these guys' tyres around us do die off a little bit, but Hulkenberg is going to be very strong on that medium compound of tyre, but we will now get DRS, but you can see me thinking, if we look at the graph here, the strategy graph, we are going to be quite low towards the end on the hard, so I would suggest that the mediums will be the same. Who knows? Meanwhile, at the front, it played so well into Leclerc's hands. Leclerc now leads on the soft compound tyre from Verstappen. 2.2 seconds a gap. Carlos signs in P3, then comes Perez in P4. And on lap 38, Esteban Ocon is making a fist of it. He's going to be battling with Nico Hulkenberg all the way to the end. DRS, and he's past him. I think we may get P8 today with Esteban, but we can see this. Carlos Sainz and Perez going at it at the front. It's a split between tyres be between uh, the cars in the top four. Russell already 4.5 seconds. The Mercedes hasn't got the pace of the Ferraris and the Red Bulls at the moment in this season. He joined us back on lap 52 as once again Esteban Ocon does get past Nico Hulkenberg. They've been exchanging places now for the last sort of five to eight laps. Um, and I reckon we'll get him. I reckon we'll get him by the end of the Grand Prix. But meanwhile, at the front, fastest lap of the Grand Prix for Carlos Sainz. He's found pace out of nowhere. 3.7 seconds gap between him and his teammate, Charles Leclerc. It's now between the two Ferraris for the win here in Miami. And Verstappen and Perez also battling it out. It looks like the medium tyres now really coming into their own over the softs. And we're hoping that the hard compound tyre is going to come into its own over the medium. Ocon's tyre is now much better than Nico Hulkenberg. So I would expect now we can start to pull away from Nico in the next couple of laps. Lando Norris, 1.5 seconds. Lando Norris is going to score a point by the looks of things for McLaren. But Valtteri Bottas could very well spoil the party. Five to go. Ocon P8. Last lap of the Grand Prix. Esteban Ocon is in P8. That's the maximum he's going to achieve today. And he's now got a gap of four seconds between himself and Hulkenberg. But we are going to focus on the battle for third place. Leclerc's got P1. Sainz has got P2. And the fastest lap. But it's Verstappen versus Perez on the last lap here in Miami for the final podium position. Max Verstappen on the medium compound attire. 52% Perez, 33% softs. It should be done and dusted for Max Verstappen. But the DRS we know is particularly powerful around here. Last lap. Last lap for Esteban Ocon, we just get that notification, but let's keep an eye on Sergio Perez and what he can do here against the virtually unstoppable Max Verstappen in real life. Can it be different on F1 Manager 2023? Let's have a little look. We'll look from the visor cam of Checo Perez round 
this final couple of corners and on this long DRS straight, will he manage to get past Max Verstappen? He will have the DRS wide open, but it's seven tenths of a second for Max Verstappen at this moment in time over Checo Perez. It looks like it's going to be done and dusted. It certainly is. Max Verstappen will come across the line to get P3. Charles Leclerc is going to cross the line to win the Miami Grand Prix. Back-to-back -back wins for Ferrari here on this F1 manager save. Carlos Sainz comes in P2. Verstappen P3. Then Perez in P4. It's going to be a long time before Lance Stroll gets across the line. 14 seconds. But he has got Lewis Hamilton... Uh, sorry, George Russell battling him all the way. But Lance Stroll will get P5 for Aston Martin. Alonso P7. And then Esteban Ocon, our driver coming around the final few corners it's been a decent performance from Esteban today we've enjoyed watching him that we were unlucky with Pierre Gasly with the red uh, with the uh, retirement we've had red flag safety cars everything this Miami Grand Prix has given us but Esteban Ocon is going to score more points for Alpine P8 decent day's work hard to imagine how things could have got much worse for Gasly today They'll be very disappointed to have had their race end early. No driver wants that to happen, but now they just have to look forward. Out and onto the podium steps Charles Leclerc, the driver from Monaco really deserving of that top three spot. Their first win of the season, and the team looking on will be very proud, I'm sure. Well, there we go then, Ferrari looking oh, particularly a... strong at this moment in time, and it's a 1-2 for Leclerc and Sainz. As we saw, Verstappen P3, Perez P4, Stroll P5, Russell P6, Alonso P7, Ocon in 8th, Hulkenberg 9th, Norris and Bottas, the big movers and shakers, gaining 6 positions respectively. We had 5 retirements, De Vries, Albon, Magnussen, Pierre and Lewis Hamilton all retiring from the Miami GP. Driver standings wise, Max Verstappen only 15 points. Gap to Leclerc now 16 points. Carlos Sainz only a point behind him in third position and Sergio Perez in P4. It's a battle between Red Bull and Ferrari in the drivers and it certainly is in the constructors as well. Just five points separate the two teams at the top of the constructor standings. We gain another four points. We're up into P5. Um, and Haas now only gaining a couple of points. 12 points behind us. It's been a decent weekend for us. Obviously very disappointing with the retirement for Pierre. But a very, very exciting race. More like that, please. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. ta -ra.